So not only light is quantized, but energy levels are quantized. Um, and in fact, we're going to see the relation between the two. So let's say we have an atom. Like I was talking about in the last video, the atom has uh, protons and neutrons in its nucleus. Whoops. And then um, orbiting that is an electron or more. This electron then can be sitting in a happy orbit, but it can also get excited. So you could excite this uh, electron in a number of ways. One way is to have light come in at it. Another way you could sort of zap it with electricity, like what's happening with the lights right now that are giving me the light for this video. Uh, these lights, these are fluorescent lights. So what's happening is they're being sort of zapped uh, with energy that way, and the electrons are going up in energy. So electrons, let's maybe see this. So the electrons get excited somehow. I don't mean they're like, yes, I just mean that uh, they get, they go up in energy. So they get excited, uh, go up in energy level. However, they sometimes they go back down. So when they go back down, they emit a photon of energy. This is the key thing here. E equals HF. This is an equation from your data booklet and it's really important. All right, so first what I'd like to do is actually show you a, a diagram of what's happening first. We'll actually, maybe we'll define these things first. Um, e equals the energy, in this case, uh, energy of the electron, but it could be the energy of the photon. It turns out they're related. We'll see that in a second. And that's measured in electron volts. And if you remember from topic five, uh, but also from uh, topic, what was it, six, I think, no, seven, uh, we were talking about electron volts as a unit of energy instead of joules. Remember, 1 EV equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, in case you want to convert them. But just leave them in EV, it's actually the easier. Uh, remember, it's just 1 E and 1e e is, uh, that's the charge of an electron, that's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, that's at the beginning of your data booklet, times 1 volt, and it turns out, well, a coulomb times a volt gives you a joule. So this is it, and it's actually very well explained by this equation here. Because this tells you the energy of, uh, remember this equation I was talking about from uh, unit 5? when I said this equation comes in and really explains a lot. This is the, you know, if you take an electron and you accelerate it across a potential difference, you know, let's say between a cathode and an anode, right, then you accelerate this electron, the speed that it will have uh, afterwards, that'll be V, that'll be little v here, big V is the voltage, E is just the charge of the electron, and M is its mass. So this tells you about kinetic energy, and notice half mv squared, that's a unit of energy, so is EV. See, that's why we use 1 EV. So E is the energy in electron volts. H is just a constant, and you can actually look it up in your data booklet, so don't worry too much about that. Just look it up if you need to. And F is the frequency of light. And that's measured in hertz, or 1 over seconds. Sometimes you want to convert that to a wavelength. So don't forget about this little equation right here, which is V equals F lambda. That's the wave equation from topic four. But if it's light, uh, V is the speed of light. So in this case, it's going to be C equals F lambda. Remember, the speed of light is three times 10 to the eight meters per second. And then if we want to, you know, if we want to take this equation, for example, maybe we can replace it. And if we don't want frequency, we can actually get uh, wavelength instead. So we can just uh, get F by itself, so we get C over lambda. That means anytime I see an F, I replace it with C over lambda. So I could say, or E equals HC over lambda. Basically, it depends if you want the frequency or the wavelength. So you can have either frequency or wavelength here. Now, this is what really happens. To maybe show you a diagram, this is going to represent the energy level 
so energy measured in electron volts. And we're not really going to put anything on the x-axis. It's just going to be lines here. So I'm going to have a line like this with a space. Maybe another one, maybe another one, and maybe another one. This is going to be 0 EV. And now, uh, for some uh, various reasons, we actually have the energy levels are actually sort of backwards what you think of. In other words, this right here, this is the ground state, which means it's the lowest in energy. The ground state, it turns out, uh, for, let's say, a hydrogen atom, it's minus 13.6 electron volts. And then uh, the next one is minus 3.4. And if I remember correctly, the next one is minus 1.5, but then there's a whole bunch of other ones between this and zero. You might wonder, well, why in the world is it negative? Don't panic when you see that. Okay, when, you, uh, when you see these negative energy levels, don't worry. It's actually a convention. It's because of how we've defined the energy of something. It turns out it has to do with uh, work and potential. And um, like if you've looked at uh, gravitational potential, it's also defined as negative. The reason is that at an infinite distance away, we say the energy is zero. So that means if you get closer, the energy has to be less than zero. So it's just, it's just an arbitrary, well, it's a convention that we've had to use. We just throw negatives in front of it. Don't worry too much, though. So what happens is this. Let's say um, it's an electron, and it gets excited. So somehow you give it a bunch of energy. Maybe it goes up here. It's like, wee. So maybe you zapped it like what's happening in the fluorescent light right now. So it goes up an energy level, maybe it goes from here to here. You give it enough energy to make that jump. Notice how these lines, though, those lines are quantized, these energy levels. In other words, it can't be halfway through. You have to give it enough energy to make a jump either from here to here, or from here to here, or from here to another one. But you can't go halfway. There is no halfway. It has to have enough to make it. Now, of course, it sits up here at an excited level, and at some point, it might actually come back down. In other words, it gets less excited. It's like the fun wears off, and it's like, okay, it goes down. It can go down naturally in a couple of ways, things that we call uh, fluorescence or phosphorescence, depending on how long it takes for it to do it. But no worries, the idea is just this. It's going to go down, and maybe it goes down in energy here, and then after that, maybe it goes down here again. Or maybe it decided to go down all the way. Okay, those are different situations possible. So maybe it went sort of from here, hangs out here for a little while, and then goes back down. Or maybe it goes from here and drops all the way down. There's three different sort of things happening here. Now, whenever, remember I said here, so when they go back down, they emit a photon of energy E equals HF. So that means, uh, I'll get some white chalk here. I mean, this one right here emits a photon of energy E equals HF. In other words, if I want to know the frequency of light, or conversely, if I want to know the wavelength of the light, well, all I need to know is the energy. And the energy is given by the difference from here to here. So 13.6 minus 1.5, and that would be my energy. And I would just multiply, uh, well, I would say that equals some constant times the frequency. So from there, I could calculate the frequency of light that's emitted. And if I want, I can convert that to a wavelength instead and find out what color of light that is. So this energy transition from here to here corresponds to a photon of a very specific frequency. In other words, color. Remember, frequency and color are related. Frequency and, well, color is the wavelength. But frequency and wavelength are sort of the same, it's just a factor of C different. So that means that this one right here gives you one photon of a certain color. This one down here also gives you a, a photon, but that one has a different energy. Right? Because this energy difference, well, it's different. 3.4 minus 1.5 is not the same as this one here. We also have a, a photon emitted here. We normally draw photons as uh, squiggly lines like this. That's normally the physics conventions. Photons are sort of, they're wavy lines like this. It's just the way we tend to draw them. So what this tells you then is that this one electron going from here to here can actually make three different colors of light. 
So what happens then is in these uh, fluorescent lights that I have right above me, I mean, you can't see it, but it's a, big, it's a big tube, and they're really bright right now because we're giving it lots of energy, right? It's plugged in, so to speak. And what we're doing then is we're exciting these electrons to a certain level, not necessarily the same because this is just for hydrogen, but um, the different materials that are in this gas here have their own energy levels that are possible, quantized ones. And of course then what happens is as they drop down either one halfway and then another step or all the way down or maybe a bunch of different steps, there's a lot of different colors being emitted. Maybe there's a red photon, maybe there's an ultraviolet, maybe there's some green. And of course then um, all these different photons coming in, they confuse our eyes. Our eyes see it as white because there's a lot of colors. So this actually explains why we get different colors here. You could, of course, take this stuff into a prism and split it up and see all the different colors. You could do a spectrum of a light and see these different lines on a spectrum. But this is the idea behind it. It's because energy uh, levels are quantized. This is what happens with electrons. They go up, they drop down, and emit photons of energy E equals HF. And you can also convert that to a wavelength if you feel like it.